So first off, um, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, I think I know almost everyone here, uh, but my name's Tom Scriver. Uh, I'm the director of the Center for Regional Economic Advancement at Cornell, and we're one of the entities that uh, helped uh, REV become a reality. Um, and we are uh, the administrator of, of the organization. Um, I wanna talk for a second about what we're trying to do here today. Um, you're gonna see around uh, these pamphlets here, uh, and you can see on the screen behind me this thing that says state of the startup economy. Um, I, I want to admit first and foremost, you know, we're startup people, we're entrepreneurs ourselves, so this is a little aspirational as entrepreneurs and startups often are. Uh, if you open this book and expect all the answers, you're not going to find them. Um, you're going to find some answers to some things, uh, and you're also going to find some things that invite new questions. Uh, really, our purpose here today is to try and convene people in the community um, that have an interest in startups, that are part of the startup ecosystem, that help support startups and care about whether or not this is a great place to start and grow a new business, um, to try and share information and to start a conversation that we hope will go on for months and years to come about how we can be most effective um, at having a great pace of startup growth. So to that end, uh, I want to also thank well, first, all of you for being here. Um, we do have one elected official here. Um, so thank you, Anna Kellis from the county legislature for coming. Uh, it's always great to see our elected officials <laughs> at events like this um, and supporting the startup community. So uh, we've got three great panels here today um, and we promise to get you out on time. So I will take the advantage of the fact that I've been given a microphone uh, for just a couple minutes um, to set the table, but I promise I won't take too long. Um, I want to start with a little bit of data. Um, you know, we're here, uh, we're a data-driven kind of folk. Um, and so one thing uh, that I want to start off with, which is about talking about the pace of startup creation. Um, so like a lot of people, we use Kaufman Foundation data a lot. Kaufman Foundation's been a big supporter uh, of startups uh, around the country and beyond. Um, and one of the things that we're seeing and we're seeing here in town um, is an uptick in entrepreneurial activity. And you can see here that off the bottom, um, which is right around uh, the 2013-2014, um, you had a lot of startup activity actually kind of inversely correlated to the market downturn in the mid-2000s. It kind of dropped as the market was recovering and as the economy is recovering. Um, we're now starting to see an uptick again, and it's something that we're seeing here in town as well. So another fact that I want to uh, give you that um, uh, you know, impacts why we do what we do, um, Kaufman Foundation has also been leading on a lot of great information about job creation. Where do jobs come from as a report that they've been updating year over year over the last few years. And what they find consistently is that young companies, new companies, especially those that turn into big companies, create by far the most jobs. And you can see here um, that companies that are zero to five years old uh, over this uh, multi-year period ending in 2014 um, created five times the jobs of companies that are five years old uh, or older, which just goes to show how important it is for communities like ours and regions like ours um, to focus on helping people start and grow new businesses. So what are the kind of assets that we've got here? I think you guys know um, that here in Ithaca, we have, you know, we're a little bit of a college town, right? That should be news to absolutely nobody. Um, but interestingly, if you look at university R&D as kind of a foundational asset, it is one of the foundational assets upon which an innovation economy is built. Um, we actually have more, this is the Empire State de Development definitions of regions. Um, we have more university R&D here in the southern tier, largely because of Cornell, but also because of Binghamton University, also because of Ithaca College and so on, um, than anywhere else in the state. And per capita, we have way more students than anywhere else in the state. We've got over 60,000 students here in the southern tier in a region uh, of 650,000 and about 30,000 of those students here in Tompkins County. So you would think then a lot of uh, upstate opportunity, both student population and innovation uh, in terms of university R&D, uptick in entrepreneurship, um, what does the venture capital uh, picture look like then in terms of helping support these businesses and helping them grow? It shouldn't surprise anybody here that the picture is pretty bleak in terms of the upstate downstate divide. When I ask people what they think the upstate downstate divide is, they'll usually say, gosh, I don't know, 80 20. Uh, well, actually, we looked at CB Insights data. Thank you, by the way, to our team and our interns for coming through all this stuff. 
um, it's actually 92.8. Um, so we're still pretty weak in terms of developing uh, sources of capital here upstate. Um, there's a lot of, of sparks of light, if you will, uh, if you don't mind me using the Bush thousand points of light, right? Um, and you're going to hear about some of those on an investor panel later in terms of people who are working extremely hard um, to bring investment into the community. Um, oops. Over. So, but let me talk about a couple of examples here that you're going to hear uh, about and you're going to see in this book about who the funders are that have helped us get where we are today. Um, so let me call out an example of Give Gab. Charlie Mulligan's here. Of course, Charlie. Charlie's in the back. Um, Charlie and I actually were just talking about the fact that a lot of the ideas that turned into Rev happened at a meeting we had at your office, what, what is it, in 2013? Two or three offices ago, I think, for GiveGab. Um, so GiveGab's a great illustrative example of how the power of a local investor, in this case, Fuga Venture Fund, and Jen Teagan, who's on the board of, of GiveGab, um, served as a lead to this company, and by being the lead investor locally who could work with the company, helped kind of grease the skids and create a pathway for investors outside of Ithaca to say, yes, it makes sense to invest here because we can count on the folks that are here working with that company. We're also starting to see some examples of some big global and national investors being willing to come into Ithaca to invest when they find opportunities that they think are compelling enough. So an example here uh, is Ursa Space Systems, which recently closed a Series A round of, I think it was $8 million, uh, from both RRE Ventures, which is a New York City-based top-tier venture fund, and NEA, um, which is a fund uh, that's really around the country, but with offices in Palo Alto as well as in Baltimore, multi-billion dollar venture fund. Um, so we are starting to see more indications over time of these kind of large-scale investors being willing to come in here. We've seen it before as well with some deals that Cuga Venture Fund has led. We also have a strong and growing angel investor community so Firelight Camps, which honestly is a little bit of a non-traditional venture deal. You may be familiar with them as the glamping company that has their pilot location uh, up at La Terrell. Um, they are now looking to expand around the country. Um, and Susan Fleming, who's a local educator in the hotel school um, and active board member and angel investor, has been part of the syndicate that's helped them get where they need to go. So Good news is we're already starting to see an impact of what these companies are doing on the local and regional community. Um, so you're going to hear from some entrepreneurs on one of the panel, uh, one of the panels about to come. But the good news is they're already starting to hire. So these six companies are all ones that are affiliated with us here at Rev. There are other companies around affiliated with other incubators and also starting and growing that are starting to have a meaningful impact on the local employment picture. And so just to give you a sense from last year. Uh, whoops. Uh, from last year, we had um, over uh, 100, or I'm sorry, over 200 employees at the companies that were Rev members. Um, they added over 90 jobs and raised over $21 million. So the kind of companies that we're look, looking to look, uh, work with here um, have three characteristics. And I think getting back to the point about what uh, the Kaufman Foundation study showed is that the kind of companies that actually grow jobs in the kind of meaningful amounts that we're looking for are ones that are young, moving fast, have high growth potential, um, and have the opportunity to create wealth not just here locally, um, but by selling products and services outside the region. So these are the companies that we've got to focus on and the kind that you are going to hear more about today. So one of the questions that often comes up, and you're going to see it here in the opening letter uh, of our uh, brochure, is oftentimes people will talk about, you know, what can Ithaca do to be the next Silicon Valley? Can Ithaca be the Silicon Valley of blah, 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 whatever it may be? Um, and uh, I want to tell you, I, I don't think any of us actually care um, to pursue that line of thinking. And if there's one thing that I can ask of you here today, it would be to please take that message away from this as well. We have no interest in being anyone else. Um, we want to be the best us we can be. Uh, and we've got a lot of tremendous assets here um, that can make us a strong and great Ithaca and can make us a strong and great Southern Tier region in upstate New York. Um, so this was actually a Zillow listing that I sent my colleagues here from a trip out to Silicon Valley a couple uh, months ago. Um, this is an otherwise nondescript 
uh, four bedroom house, 1,800 square feet on a, what is it? I think it's a 6,000 square foot lot. So the size of the lot is not that much bigger than the house. And the estimate is what, 3.9 million, right? Um, there's a lot that we can do to be very attractive um, to people who are looking to start and grow new businesses in a great community. So one question that we also get that I want to address head on is what about the startups that leave? Um, we have plenty of examples of companies that have been with us here um, that have then gone on uh, to do other things in other places. So uh, an example of a Rev member company and one that I've worked with uh, through my board service at TCAD is Ithaca Hummus. Um, so Ithaca Hummus, still branded Ithaca Hummus for a variety of reasons they decided to no longer produce on their own here in Tompkins County um, and are working with a co-packer in Rochester. Or an example like Madebot, a company that came out of the hardware accelerator that we run here at Rev. In fact, you can see all the stuff in the back that we asked folks to clean up, but they're hard at work on prototypes this summer. Um, Madebot made a lot of progress, but decided to move their main uh, base of operations to where their funding was coming from uh, in Austin, Texas. Or Eversound, another company that was a Rev member company came out of eLab, which is the student business accelerator at Cornell. Um, has raised money through the Cornell uh, Angel Network um, and moved to be close to their production uh, and product design shop in New Hampshire. Um, or OrthoFit, a company that we're working with currently, also an eLab alum company, Cornell PhDs working on uh, adaptive gloves uh, for repetitive stress injury that are now part of Mass Challenge. One thing that we found with all of these companies is that they all still love it here. They all still are advocates for Ithaca. They're all advocates for this community. And so one other message that I'd like you guys to take away from this is that when people do move on, our opportunity is to keep them as part of our fan club, keep them part of our family, um, and help them continue to make connections. And what we found, for example, with Eversound is just the other day, Jake Rice, who's the founder of Eversound, came in to do a couple hour video session with our hardware accelerator teams to help them get up to speed and make those kinds of connections. So let me just talk a little bit about what Rev is. Um, so you are here in our downtown business incubator. It's administered by Cornell, as I mentioned. It's a partnership between Cornell, Ithaca College, and TC3. Um, the main purpose we have here is to work with local startups and help convene the local entrepreneurial community and to help people start and grow new businesses. As I mentioned, we've got a lot of assets here, great R&D, lots of students, a legacy in the region of hardware and manufacturing, and a lot of entrepreneurs who've made a go of it over the last 30 years, frankly, without a lot of the infrastructure that exists today. And we can leverage their experience and their connections to succeed. What we are finding is that the state is focusing on this area a lot. They're putting capital to work. I want to call out Clayton Besh from the back. Hey, Clayton. Uh, we'll hear from Clayton in a little bit, but uh, Clayton works for New York State uh, as part of their venture fund. Um, and we're seeing a lot more entrepreneurs who are interested in finding opportunities to stay and grow here in Ithaca and leverage the resources that are here. So I want to just mention a couple of programs that you may have heard of that we're also a part of that are connected here, just to kind of give you a little bit of the lay of the land. One is the Southern Tier Startup Alliance, which we also administer. It's a regional incubation network. It's a member organization of business incubators, um, including REV, including the McGovern Center up at Cornell, uh, the Kauffman Southern Tier Incubator in Binghamton, Incubator Week Works and Painted Post. Um, I mentioned the Hardware Accelerator. We've got teams right now working in an 11-week intensive summer program um, to develop new products, going napkin to prototype. Um, and we're working with uh, a team called NextCore, which is our kind of partner organization in Rochester to expand what we do for people working in physical products. We work on a program funded by the National Science Foundation across upstate New York and beyond called the UNY i node, um, which helps people with commercialization assessments of new inventions and new technologies. Oh. Uh, and then, of course, we've got 76 West, uh, NYSERDA's clean energy business uh, competition with a million dollar top prize and we're starting to see some really great traction of companies that have won prize money in the first two years of 76 West stay and grow in this region and in Ithaca in particular and we're in year three of that right now and we're super excited about the 20 companies um, that are moving forward in that competition uh, to six prize winners. So I just want to draw your attention to one other thing, which is I'm just giving you a very quick overview of the overall ecosystem. 
Um, but it is a very complicated place. And one of the questions I asked a panel of entrepreneurs a week or two ago is, we've got all of these different programs and all of these different acronyms, and every time you turn around, it seems like New York State is starting a new thing with a new acronym. How do you kind of navigate that process? And frankly, how much do you care about when one program ends and another program begins? The answer is we need help figuring it out. That's not our core competency as an entrepreneur as a startup. But honestly, we don't really care about when a program ends or begins, right? When does one thing, when does Rev turn into start, Southern Tier Startup Alliance or the Hardware Accelerator or whatever? They don't really care. They're laser focused as they should be on growing their business. So let me give an example of Ecolectro, a company represented here today, that participated in a variety of different programs. So they were part of Nexus New York, which is a uh, NextCore NYSERDA funded proof of concept center, helping them get up to speed. A lot of what Nexus does is very similar to what the UNYI core node is now trying to do. They were members of REV and then got admitted to the McGovern Center where they're able to get lab uh, resources that suited their needs better than we can do here. And so from their perspective, they're a community success story, even though they're moving across a variety of different programs to get where they need to go. And so I would just encourage you to think of it that way as you think about all of these different programs. The state and others are gonna be willing to fund different things at different times. Our job as entrepreneur supporters is to help the startups and the entrepreneurs themselves navigate those waters so that they can get where they need to go. So um, we're very grateful to all the people who helped us get here. We have a variety of different funders. We have a variety of different supporters. And particularly on the capital side, I wanna call out a few people you're gonna hear about in the uh, panel coming up. Uh, Marnie Levine is here from Launch New York. So Launch New York is a key partner of the Southern Tier Startup Alliance. Um, we help them provide EIR services to companies through the STSA across the region, and Rev is one of those business incubators. Um, a lot of companies that we've worked with have started to access capital through Launch New York Seed Fund and through programs like New York State. Um, we've got Elisa Miller out here from Chloe Capital as well. So we're starting to see a lot of other supporters come into the network um, to help uh, companies start and grow. So with that, I wanna turn it over uh, in a minute to a couple panels so you can hear from entrepreneurs, providers of capital, um, and talk about the real estate landscape. But before I do that, I wanna hand it over um, to Mary Opperman from Cornell and my boss. Thanks, Tom. I, I'm too short. If I stand down there, you'll never see me. But. Um, so thank you all for coming. This is a great turnout. I hope you have a good, can you hear me through this? Okay, good. Um, Tom did a great overview as he always does. <clears throat> I did want him to put back that uh, picture of that house in Palo Alto so we can just all feel better about ourselves. <clears throat> so people have asked me, why did we start way back when, why did the university and Ithaca College and TC3 start REV? Why, and why, interestingly, did David Scorton ask the head of human resources, that's me, um, to spearhead that effort? And um, the answer to that is actually um, fairly simple. We knew, the college presidents knew, um, that the vibrancy of this community is vitally important to our three higher ed institutions. Um, but also, quite frankly, we care about this community. We live here, it matters to us, and, and why the human resource person, um, partly because I'm just pushy and I cared a lot about it, um, but also because we knew that higher ed would not be on a high growth trajectory, and we needed to look at how we could support the community as they diversified the economy. Um, it was something that we were just starting off doing in New York with, um, with Mayor Bloomberg, it became Cornell Tech, and we wanted to do the right thing um, here in our local community, and um, REV was a step in that direction. I just wanna take a minute also and say that, um, while the, I think Tom is right, some of the state programs in particular can sometimes be confusing, overarching strategy of the governor to focus on upstate New York has been really a game changer for us. The, the regional councils have gotten the opportunity to step back and think about what matters and what's important and what will work in each of our communities. And for us, 
what we know is that um, growing the businesses that we have here and really moving entrepreneurial startups is our sweet spot. That's what we do really well in this community. And we have some secret weapons, and that is the connection between higher ed and those startups and growth um, businesses that we have in the area. Why? Well, obviously one of those is because of the great ideas that are generated out of our faculty and staff, but the other is our students. We have the opportunity to keep them here, keep their ideas here, maybe long-term and maybe short-term. But to Tom's point, if they stay and grow a business that eventually goes, they still had their roots here. And so that deep loyalty that they felt to their alma mater becomes a deep loyalty to our community. And so I, I really believe that what we do here at REV is, a, is um, create meaningful connections for businesses, hopefully that will stay here forever, but even if they stay here for a short time, we've grown their roots to our community and that will give back to us and back to us. Um, so our member, as you know, our member um, companies are already creating jobs, 90 in the last year. A job is, is so important to a, a, a human being's sense of relevance to the world around them and to their family. And the future is in small companies and startups. And we have the opportunity here in our community to be a relevant player. I agree, we don't want to be the next Silicon Valley, although if you own, I don't know if you noticed, but on that picture, that $3 million house was only worth 350000 in 1993. So, you know, if you own, um, just saying. Um, but we have the opportunity to take what we're already good at and create a jumping off point to be an even better community than we are today. Not to be a different kind of a community, but to take what we know we wanna do, support the people that wanna do that even more here, and make ourselves even better. And that comes, I think, from the passion we all feel about being part of this community. You just can't buy that. That's something that happens when you really invest here and I mean invest of yourself. And that allows people to have a sense of this community as well as the really the growing personal regard and respect you have when you have a job that means something to you. So um, we give a, just a taste of that to our students when they work through REV and internships on really fascinating work that our companies are doing. Um, and that I, we hope and we've already seen both through our, um, the eLab, but even here at, at, um, at REV, helps them to start to get their creative juices flowing and think about doing something right here in our community. So, um, as you heard, um, the startup community is strong, and, and I, what I'm here to say is Cornell's commitment to that startup community continues, but we need to continue to attract startups and retain them and help them set their roots here. So. Um, we want to move right on to our panels who are going to help us understand how to do that. Startups face many challenges, and a very significant one, as Tom mentioned, is funding. So I'd like to introduce to you Jason Salfi. Jason, the moderator of our first panel today on investment. Jason's going to tell you a bit about his experience as a startup and help us understand more about the challenges facing startups seeking investors in our area. Jason? 